Hello and welcome to MIP TV and here with Bob Cook in TA Made Simple where we make transactional analysis theory and we simplify it so everybody can understand it and, uh, and learn it. And on this particular uh, episode, we're looking at something called script backlash. So, um, so share what that is, Bob. <laughs> well, in earlier TA Made Simple videos, I talked about the, a central concept in transaction analysis language called script. The, and that's a life plan which you learn and decide on in early childhood and you play out today. That's basically the definition of a life plan. And mostly what TA therapists do is identify this life scrum life script which people have you know chosen and if it's not helping them um help them put a new one on the road mm. okay now the concept of script backlash which eric Byrne devised in 1968 and 69 just before his what you say hello book on scripts is the idea that when people start changing their script which has been decided on early on in childhood usually it responds to parents and significant others, and it becomes part of their identity and how they see life, that if you start changing it, you often will get a backlash and feel uncomfortable. Mm. So here's a clinical case for you. Okay, very early client of mine, and this is a true story. So I started seeing eight, nine, ten sessions, and on the 12th or 13th session, I asked her to do, go back home, look in the mirror, and start finding your inner child and give yourself your inner child permissions to be and to, uh, you know, love yourself, right? So I thought that was quite good homework. And at that time, certainly in the TA literature, it was like giving permissions to your inner child. Anyway, she didn't turn up at the next session. So in those days, there was not such thing as voicemail. So I was worried and anxious. And anyway, I decided, to, decided eventually to phone her up and left a voicemail because she never answered. But she came to the next session. So I said, oh, you know, hi, where were you last session? Because I thought we'd done really good work the week before. She said, I had a terrible headache. In fact, I've had a headache ever since I started doing that homework that you talked to me about. Oh, yes. Oh, well, tell me about that. You know, that homework when I had to look in the mirror and uh, say, you know, that I'm lovable to the child and me. All I could see when I looked in the mirror was my mother. And my mother was telling me off for being indulgent and um, uh, actually uh, bragging. And uh, I then got a headache. Ah, so she skipped the adult and gone into the yeah. critical parent. Yeah. So I said, where was the headache? You know, and she pointed to the left, the left side of her head. I said, oh, wow. And she said, she said yes. Every time I did something bad, my mother used to hit me. Ah. So script backlash. When she started to do something against the script that her mother had laid down for her, she got a backlash. Mm. That's the term. Isn't it fascinating? We often, find that. we often find that as people start to change what they've often been programmed to do, especially by significant others in their childhood. If they start to change it, and put a new show on the live, they often feel more uncomfortable and rubber band back to childhood. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Mm. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Mm. You know, and uh, there's not, you know, there's, there's also, I'm guessing, uh, some kind of transference in there because if she's experiencing what her mother did, she's mm. actually kind of, she's kind of actually living in a, a bit of a transference there, isn't yeah, she? She's gone back to a, an earlier time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where she was, you know, uh, in relationship with her mother. And her mother, in this scenario, uh, was telling her off to be bad and actually hitting her for actually bragging and uh, seeing herself as special. Mm. Now, it's very, very common, Rory, that when people start changing, they actually hit resistance to change. Because actually they would have changed if they could have changed easily, wouldn't they? Mm. So what happens is as they start to change their script or things about them, you know, like expressing emotions, for example, men particularly, they will often feel resistance to that. And that is called script backlash. And they often feel uncomfortable. And psychotherapy might go back a stage to go forward. 
How interesting. And how does the therapist would how does how does the therapist support script backlash? What what kind of interventions would would you or, or did you put in to to support this uncomfortable kind of dissonance the client was having? Yeah. Well, the first step is you believe them. Mm. In other words, you stay congruent in the relationship. Hmm. And you may even say sorry, by the way, that wasn't my intention. I didn't mean to invite you back to an earlier stage. Let's talk about this and let's start examining this, the script and what, ha or, you know, what, uh, help her understand her story. Hmm. And here's the very crucial thing is that you stay with her in therapy and you need to eventually be larger than the actual original parent. Ah, of protection. Yes, you need to be a bodyguard almost. Yeah, that's a very. Good, I really like that. That's the first time I heard that term. But absolutely, that's a fantastic term. Yes, yeah. you are a positive bodyguard. Oh, how interesting! That's a really good term for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a positive bodyguard and stands in between the interjected parent and the inner child. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm sure a lot of therapists do that, no matter what modality they're in, mm -hmm. because you know they're they they they. So, sometimes it feels, as a therapist myself, that mm. you're literally you're literally in this kind of battle between the 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 abuser or the parent and the clients in the middle, and it's almost like your intervention and and their transference is is is, is colliding. You know, oh, right. yeah. yeah. That's right. And Eric Byrne talked about giving permissions yes uh now i agree with him however you really need to analyze the script the life plan the early childhood dramas before and know the person really before you i think give out permissions mm -hmm. because if you don't know them and you don't understand the script you could be actually inviting them to do things which actually are inflammatory to the earlier parent or abuser even yeah yeah and i think you know i think that's a uh you know for anybody who's watching who's not a ta therapist that i mm. think is a universal kind yeah. of idiom really because what you're doing is you're really understanding the client mm. and really understanding where the client's coming from and their history and where the, where they are and building that relationship before you put in any form of intervention in yeah because you right. need to know you don't want to re-traumatize them which is effectively what happens yeah. And what I did, and I was, about, I was a way back in my early history, and I'd only seen it for about 10, 11 sessions, and no way was the relationship formed. If I go this is back in the middle 80s, when relational psychotherapy wasn't really explored even as a term, mm. and I had not seen her long enough, I, I hadn't got the relationship formed properly, I hadn't certainly hadn't analyzed the script, I certainly didn't know her very well, and I was giving her permissions willy-nilly to do things via homework which, without knowing the intrapsychic consequences. Mm. And of course, intrapsychic means the, the, the understanding and the living with self. Oh, that's, right. that's, that's what it means, isn't it? So, mm. I mean, I think, that, I think that's fascinating. And I think it, my big takeaway from this, Bob, is mm. adult, as a therapist, don't act in haste. You know, yes. be patient, wait for the process to unfold, wait for the client to unfold. And mm. then, then you, can really, you can really understand mm. um, the client and also make sure the relationship's strong enough because, you, you know, yeah. Yeah. people have spoken about, Clark and spoke about the repetitive relationship and, 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 you know, this idea that you're building that therapeutic relationship and at mm. some level you're, you know, I guess it goes back to, you know, Kohlberg, doesn't it? And, and all, the, all the historic self-psychology people yeah. where you're yeah. borrowing, they're borrowing a piece of you until they right. themselves up. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the term bodyguards and I think it's an idealised bodyguard. Yes. That's the important thing. And necessarily so. Now, cohort in self-psychology, when you talk about idealised transference, what he's really talking about is protection. Yes. And I think positive bodyguard that is providing protection is a wonderful metaphor for change helping the client change yeah yeah in a protective way yeah 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 and it, it just all goes back doesn't it to to our early life experiences you know you know how children run to a, an adult who 
who offers them, you know, hopefully protection, but also a kind of adult from an adult perspective. Mm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I really like what you're saying about across different modalities. Hopefully, the therapist or counsellor, um, you know, not only has language to understand what they're doing, but actually will think about building the relationship, building up the understanding of script and not making interventions before they really understand the person in front of them. Yeah, and it just links into something, something else, Bob. You know, when you see clients that have had abusive histories, sometimes they test you out to see if you're tough enough. Yeah, that, that's, I, I, that's absolutely right. That you're a big enough parent to stand up yeah. to the abuser. Yeah, that you're big enough, correct. strong enough, and that, and that you won't buckle because what, effectively... What, what they're looking for is they're channeling that hit person from their history through them to you. And they, they're making sure that the person who ran over them won't run over you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely correct. So it's a very important concept to think about. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it links into what we always talk about at the end of these kind of metaphys- <laughs> metaphysical, about self-care, about, about own personal therapy, yeah. about having good supervision about you know underst- understanding the nature of trauma and abuse you know all those all those kind of things that without that you 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 really could get well and truly trampled across oh without that <laughs> well said i really yeah. agree with those words well there we go it's script backlash we've extended that a bit with a few other um bits of information i hope that's been really useful for you remember this video is part of the playlist so if you want to watch the entire um the entire range from um, ego states which is the very beginning the yeah. the, 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 the the structural model right yeah. through to this if you click on the playlist you'll find all the videos and you can literally teach yourself to some level ta yeah, yeah the 101 yeah. there That's yeah nice. the 101 there so as always bob cook thank you very much thank you